So there's something analogous in more posterior regions of the language network on the left hemisphere. Um, you know, there's there's also um, what we call transcortical sensory aphasias because we're dealing with sort of uh, the comprehension of either, um, you know, visual sign or auditory, you know, speech, basically. Um, and so you can have Wernicke's area completely intact, but if you cut Wernicke's area off, from regions like um, you make white matter cuts that cuts it, you know, cut the cabling off from the angular gyrus or from the ventral temporal lobe or other regions in these more posterior portions of the, bra of the brain. Well, you're going to have potentially some significant comprehension problems, even without any sort of direct damage to Wernicke's. So again, this is evidence, these transcortical sensory aphasias that are, you know, uh, disconnecting areas, you know, in more posterior regions that are involved with comprehension of language, you're, it's indicative of a more distributed posterior network, right? Areas towards the back involving Wernicke's, potentially angular gyrus. There's one called the supermarginal gyrus. There's a whole bunch of different regions there we're, ad we're identifying that are involved in a more distributed network for the comprehension of either speech or sign you know, or, uh, or, written, or written language, for example. So uh, again, it's not so localization, it's not just Wernicke's that is involved in comprehension.